Great. Call to order, 7 o'clock. That's great. Uh, I don't see any members of the public um, except Jessica, and we know why you're here, which is great. Thank you. Um, the December 5th meeting minutes, I sent those out right after the meeting, so hopefully everybody got a chance to look at those. Anybody have any comments, questions? Ooh, I'm trying to call them back up again right now. Let's see. Oh yeah, I think, well, I mean, I looked at them when I did them and then you didn't have any visceral reaction at the time? Mm -hmm. No, I did not. <laughs> Does anybody want to make a motion? So move. Diane moved. I'll second that. Mike second. All in favor? All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. So, great. Um, okay, so today our plan is to talk a little bit more about the list. Um, and um, do you want to put that up? Okay. I just sent it today. I emailed it. This thing does not. Work. They're terrible chairs. Okay. <laughs> I feel like the chair rolls really well, yeah, but, they're new, right? but then it like hits a certain no? spot. And I don't know if it's like, you know, when you get the shopping cart where you're like going along and then all oh, of a sudden it like yeah. takes you away. Yeah. That's what these wheels are like. I'm like, I roll to a certain point and it's all good. And then it just goes sideways. And I'm like, what's happening here? Yeah, no, these green ones were cast offs from the National Bank of Middle Earth. Well, no, they don't have the ones either. I think that's just weird. You get slouchy position. I think that yeah, the executive so. you know, gets the arms. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, so I'm, I, I'm not drunk. I just have wonky wheels. <laughs> I told Kelly that I, I, I did have dinner before I came, but I was, um, I was, Eating a lot of Oreos, not uh, <laughs> I wasn't drinking. <laughs> All right, and we we're yeah. Anyway, that's probably enough. Okay, so there we go. I killed enough time, and we got that. Right. Gotcha. All right, so um, this is the the list from last time, but what I've done is I've added some highlighting um, to start some of our conversation. So um, if we can uh, not get in the weeds yet with the column D. Um, but what I want to do is just first talk about the ones that are highlighted in gray. So um, the ones that are highlighted in gray, um, I'm going to propose that we discuss taking off the list. I'm totally open to your pushback on this, but let me tell you why. So I want to start from the bottom. So you see the first thing that's highlighted in gray is the community care fund. Um, it was a suggestion, it's a terrific idea that we set money aside for people in the community having an emergency. That is not something we can do with ARPA funds. Um, and um, I think that we should take it off. So do you guys wanna do these one at a time or uh, do you want me to tell you all my reasoning first? Let's blast them all. Keep going. Well, well, wait, how do you know that that ARPA funds cannot be used for that? Because I asked. Um, so uh, some of the things that um, in, way back at our very beginning meeting, um, one of the things that um, I asked was, can we put the money in investment um, mm -hmm. so that we can use the interest into the future to use for, you know, needs of this type? And the answer is a hard no on that. And the other thing um, was, can we just give the money directly to people? Um, and that was like, no, like you could, the, the town could use it for emergency pay, um, but I, I think what they can't do is say, we're going to give it to a subset of people. So they could say, I mean, like uh, the people in need, we, they could give it to emergency responders, or they could give it to um, police who worked through COVID, you know, so they could give it to people who provided COVID relief or did something. But I don't think that uh, what we can't do is create a fund. Mm -hmm. So we could give it to people, but we can't create a fund. Um, and the other thing is that um, not only are we not allowed to create a fund to use in the future, but um, this also um, would be something that require oversight and somebody would have to manage it, receive the requests, um, consider it. And I think that that would be an awkward thing for certainly the town administrator or the select board to put themselves in as being the arbiter of who in the community needs money. Um, mm -hmm. There may be other agencies or organizations who could do that. I mean, I know, for example, all of the area churches have a community fund that, um, you know, that parishioners or community members can give money to, and then the, the pastor can give the money out. Um, but I, I just, 
I think it's a tricky one for us. So I know let's do it one at a time. What okay. do we think about that one? I think from a logistics standpoint, it has to come off. I mean, our hands are pretty tight on that. Mm -hmm. And there's other things covering that. If I mean, I mean, we've got to eliminate some. <laughs> I don't know if we do or not, but anyway, well, I'll, I'll entertain a motion um, if you guys want to. <laughs> I'll make a motion to eliminate uh, the community care fund from the list. Anybody second? Second. Any discussion? No, we already have it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. Opposed? I think we're all Okay. Did Rob raise his hand? I think so. Did you raise your hand, Rob? Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> only only um, as an eye. Okay. Okay, next one that's gray on the list is the pool. Um, we don't have an estimate for the pool. Uh, we don't know who we would build it, who would build it or where it would go. We already have a pool in town and this would be a great big ongoing expense. Um, I think it would use up a lot of our money and um, I'm proposing that we take it off. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. We have wonderful rivers that people can take. Okay, so we have a first and a second again. Um, who wants to, to argue back on that one? I feel, I mean, it just seemed like it was something that the community was really interested in. I mean, I don't know where we would put it. <laughs> I'm not sure of any of those things. However, the idea of it seemed really awesome. So, I mean, I can't argue it. I don't have any facts or figures to support my claim of keeping it on there. Otherwise, other than just, wow, wouldn't that be cool if we could have a pool that we had access to during the summer months and we could have swim lessons for all children. It's a big equity piece in the state that every, you know, in this, these five towns, yes, there's one in Virginia. but- They have swim lessons, but now they pool. That's where they used to have them. They stopped during COVID, but- Yeah, but they have swim lessons yeah. there. They have some. It's not. It's not a lot. There's not a lot of accessibility to the Mount Abe pool. And and that's that's point. a bigger issue. Yeah. And so I would. One thing we can do is very similar to what when we talked about housing is that this was a when we present to the select board, this was an item that had a lot of community interest. We don't feel like this is the right funding mechanism for such, and then we would recommend that they put together a exploratory right. committee and go down yes. and go down that road. But it's outside of our scope and scale. By a lot of community support. Where did you hear that? Through the outreach that we did. Through, oh, I mean, yeah. it, it was a, it was a, it came a at the spaghetti dinner. You know, a woman approached me about that, and then she went and wrote on every single one of those pieces of paper. And so, so and we, have had more. we had a lot of interest in it, and a couple of her friends, but I didn't hear much else. No, we, we saw probably say half a dozen or more um, people do the, the postcard drop off the mm -hmm. comic cards. Yeah. And at different times too. So it wasn't like a bunch of them, yeah. But it is a big ongoing. Well, yeah. And to your point, Chris, you know, one of the things that's also on our agenda tonight is to talk about the way we make our recommendations to the select board. Um, and so uh anything that we take off this list tonight, mm -hmm. I think will be so we have this list, then we have our second tier. Anything we take off this list tonight, I think has a narrative section in between those two tiers that says these would have been on our first list, but they're not, and here's why. But we want to make sure you see them select board and you know that, that these are things important to the community. Um, so, you know, we're not going to like flush it down the toilet okay. and we're not even going to bury it. We're just going to take it off of this list mm -hmm. and then, you know, it'll be an intermediary thing. So to your point, we can say to the select board, the things on this list are things that you should look into, how they look into it, when they look into it, over what time period, but, um, but not ARPA fund per se. Yeah, okay. I can't, I can only imagine the expense of actually putting it in oh, yeah. is going right. to be, would be would yeah. use a lot of money. Yeah. I That's think. actually one of the other considerations for taking these off the list is could it happen in the time frame mm -hmm. of ARPA funds? Mm -hmm. And no, the happen. idea of you know so, all of the planning, the engineering, the siting, um, and the fund rate, yeah, I think it's tricky. So okay, so I I wrote okay. you down as motion and you as second because sure. you guys both jumped in. Um, any other discussion? 
All in favor of taking this off this list? Aye. Uh, opposed? Okay. I, I go with I. I, I am an I. I'm sorry. I just, I just, you're saying I? You're I am saying. because if, if the fact that it can be like still and, and, suggested. and still suggested with some information and I like that idea. So it's not like you said, it's not just flushed down the toilet. There can be further conversations amongst the select board if it's something that they want to pursue. Yeah. Okay, thank okay. you. I like they that. You have a 10 year project. Too, so. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm sure. Which yeah. would be great. And I agree with you on the equity analysis. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so the next one is this idea of um, the farmer's market, local ag support, community garden, and um, forgive me, but I also lumped in buying the land on West Street that's available. So the reason that I think we should talk about this and either take it off or at least be more clear what we mean um, is uh, threefold. First, um, two of the three parcels on that West Street um, have been sold. Yeah, so it there's is West Pleasant. It is West Pleasant. Pleasant. Yes, yeah. thank you, West Pleasant. Yep. Um, so there's only one parcel left. Oh, which um, parcel is left? The, I one, don't, oh. the one that's closest to um, the Giselle's house, which is the White House. Oh, okay. So no. her property abuts that that yeah. lot. So that can't be a very big lot. No, it's 0.33. Yeah, it's a little quarter acre lot. It's a typical yeah. village lot. So so there's only one left there. Um, furthermore, um, you know, the first thing we heard all over all of our things was housing. housing. I know. And we need housing. Mm -hmm. There is a community garden. It's no longer in the village, but it's still very well supported, and it's pretty close to the village now mm -hmm. down on Hewitt. Um, so I feel like. The idea of a community garden, the idea of the land on West Street, we should take off of the table, which then leaves the other related ideas of, you know, reigniting a farmer's market or trying to come up with some way for local ag support. I feel if we want to leave the local ag support on there, we need to try to give a little more guidance to the select board about what that means. And I went back through the notes and there really wasn't anything very detailed about that. Um, if we want them to look into a farmer's market or if we want to set money aside to get a farmer's market started, that would be fine, except that that would be an ongoing expense and how would that be funded in the future? So um, my proposal is that we, at a minimum, take off the community garden and the land on West Street. Absolutely. And then that as a committee, you guys tell me whether you feel like we should have something in here that's going to try to support local farmers um, or our farm community and how we want to try to let that be represented to the select board or do we want to just move that down like with the pool and say here's a thing we think is important we don't really have anything for it we encourage you to look into it mm -hmm. but I, I'm open to ideas I don't, I'm not saying we should take the whole thing off I just want to make sure we take off the land and community garden piece 100%. and then see about that so thoughts people you know, as soon as you said the affordable housing or housing crisis, yes, there's a piece there. So somebody could buy it and put up a house just like they did on Maple Street. Yeah. So I, right. I agree yeah, with that. There's only two building lots that are available in the village right now. Right. Does anyone um, know how um, well used the community garden space on Hewitt Lane is? Is anyone talking? I can't hear anyone. You're muted. Let's we try again. Helen, can you hear me? Not, oh, briefly. Yes. Okay. Huh, strange internet. Can you raise your hands if you can hear me? Yes, okay, good. Okay, so um, it is very well used. I don't know if it's full because I don't know if Jono has a um, like a limit on that space because it's a pretty big space. Um, but I do know that it's very actively used and people have been pleased. Uh, apparently the soil is really amazing. Okay, so my other thought on that, on this whole um, line item is that um, one of the points in the article in the last Addison Independent from Jessica's students um, was, mental health issues and mental health concerns that arose during COVID, lockdown, quarantine, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm looking through this list and, and I, th I think that needs to be addressed and I think we should do 
um, something, if not whatever we can, to try to help out on that issue. I don't think that most of the other things on this list address that at all. Uh, AC for Holly Hall, Mason's Elevator, Rescue Squad, none of these have anything to do with mental health for the citizens of Bristol. And therefore I thought the pool, which actually could be a very good community center, lots of activity, fun, relaxation, great. Farmer's market, a chance to interact with friends and neighbors. Okay, so if we eliminate those, the only thing left that might encourage um, neighborly interaction is the skate park. So I'm, I just wanna make a plea for not ignoring that aspect of ARPA and the consequences of COVID. I don't wanna see all of these funds used for infrastructure that do nothing for the majority of Bristol residents who are seeking ways to get back the community aspects that they feel have been lost. I think there are many things left on the list that meet that need of community input and community. Can you hear Helen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think there are many things. So when you say, you know, there's nothing left, that's I don't think that's true. So what what can you point to? Uh, well, the rescue squad upgrades would help them respond to mental health needs. Yeah. Turning point is addiction, which mm -hmm. is under the mental health category. Yeah. Uh, Accessibility on the trails, the pedestrian path along Pine Street. Um, the Mason's elevator, the rationale for that is to, to in, increase programming, yeah, that's programming for, for seniors who have been locked in in absolutely next to the kids, the second largest devastated group. Yeah, it's a needy population. So, uh, the library is to provide additional programming, which is more opportunities for participation. A dog park is also a social thing. And then, then the recreation ones, the bike racks, the ice rink. I hear your point. And I actually, I mean, I made a note while you were talking, Helen, that um, I think that that's also something that should go in the narrative is like what's missing. Um, and, and I think that mental health is a point to be added to that narrative to say like, here's something that, you know, is an issue and a need and wasn't addressed by the ideas that we got directly um, and should be kept in mind. And I'm not sure about the statement that community uh, interaction or whatever has been lost. Why Why would someone say that? Bristol's a very active group thing. Well, we used to have a farmer's market and we no longer do. Well, it failed. Yeah, it only ran one season. Okay. And it didn't support. And it's difficult. You know, somebody would have to take turns. I understand that it's nobody's fault, but it didn't work. There weren't enough vendors, people didn't come. Well, maybe that's part of the narrative. Like in the summertime, there's the music, um, music on the green with the food. Maybe somehow a farmer's market gets tied into there too, since there's something already happening there. So maybe that mm -hmm. is a narrative saying there's some ideas to carry that forward because if you already have individuals that are participating in something there would that be a cause for other people to be oh i'm gonna sell my 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 goods here my produce or what have you because there's already individuals at the green i mean i don't even know if it's going to be happening again, but that was really great it was it got a lot of people out too. it was successful well i mean could we leave farmer's market on the list with uh, you know, a nominal amount, five or $10,000 and, and encourage the select board to figure out how to support local farmers or encourage them to make connections with buyers and whether they do that by, even if it's just a one-off, whether they give it, give it to Bristol Core and try to get them to hire somebody to run a summer farmer's market or give it to a local farmer um, and see if that person will spearhead. Or, or Kirk Ladle, who's actually going to be running Monday. Monday night things. Monday night things. So yeah, I have no problem sitting at that, except for the five, ten grand at it. And 
with that expectation that this is seed money to restart, rekindle that program. Yeah, and How and where, we don't know. And they take a group. Maybe there's just a group of citizens who are really interested and they can pull it together. I'd be, I'd be good to that. So, but we leave it farmer's market and local ag support. Like the point sure. of the farmer's market is not just so that community members can buy healthy food. It's also so that we're supporting our local farmers and giving them an uh, added marketing opportunity. And and, and, I, and big piece of that is explaining how many of the local farmers actually want to do it again. That was one of the things that um, Joe ran into when she, when she ran it previously in town. Is it was hard finding. It was time. Yeah, it was hard finding. I mean, when best time for the farmer's market is harvest time, it's when you have the least amount of time. So it, I, I think it would be great to have a, a marker there with the expectation of, hey, if this could work, we have some fun set aside that it could do that it could be applied to that in you know, that manner. No question. You know, like how there's the peace garden that's run solely by volunteers, is that mm -hmm. correct? So yeah. maybe this is something like that. Do we during town meeting do we give money to the peace garden or no? No. So it's just a volunteer was a group that, was that we really wanted it to happen. There, so maybe there, that there, there is, is money. Okay. Huh? Like when something like if a uh, bench rots. Right. Okay. Yeah, I but I think that they they get their own plans. So. Yeah. That's all right. So uh, does that feel? I mean, I want to capture the spirit, Helen, of your point to make sure that we. I think. I think. Even more importantly than just not taking out the farmer's market and the local ag is that we do highlight mental health um, for something we want to see the select board keep on their radar screen. Um, but if we put an amount in here um, and encourage them to focus on trying to find somebody to reignite that, but we set aside the community garden and the land on Pleasant Street, does that feel like it addresses the spirit of what you're hoping to see? Yeah. Yeah, sure. no, okay. Oh. okay. Um, so I mean, can I hear a motion? Sure. Uh, I'll make a motion that we strike the community garden land on West Pleasant Garden from line from line fifty four. I mean the farmers market with five grand. Okay, second. Okay. Um, further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So the next gray one is the public restrooms. Um, this makes um, our town employees um, uh, nervous is an understatement, Allison. Um, and um, I, I was not able to get any figures for it. So I don't I don't have an estimate of how much it would cost. Um, I feel like um, this is one that I personally put in. <laughs> I just feel like it's an equity issue. I feel like it's really important. Um, but it's possible that we could um, resolve this somewhat with signage, letting people in the community know where they can access bathrooms um, through local businesses or municipal buildings during the day. Um, and that might be a step in that direction. And I'd be willing to, you know, let this be in the narrative that goes to the select board to say like, hey, this is an equity issue. If you want to be an equitable community in the long run, this is a big deal, um, you know, and have them think about it. But um, I'm not feeling like we have enough. I, I just feel like it's a, a big black hole. Um, and I know that it's going to be hard for our community leaders to get behind at this point. So. That's why I was suggesting that we demote it to a narrative recommendation rather than um, yes, absolutely. I mean, it, it, I, mean I know because you were the, you were one of the people who were like, oh. I mean, it, it, because the, the public grocery mall sounds it sounds great. But the, the downside to it is it goes against one of the things we talked about not yes. wanting. It's going to be an ongoing expensive venture with no funding mechanism after year one when we build it. And where would you build? Well, it's particularly tricky too, like as a municipality that doesn't have a sewer system. Yeah. So, but I mean, I think but downtown, they, they they have a collective septic. Yeah. yeah. So I think that if we demote it to a narrative thing, 
um, and include the idea of leaving a portalette um, on or near the park year-round, or maybe finding someplace on the park or near the park where we could make a little, build something that would be a little more aesthetic to put the portalette in um, as a recommendation, but I don't know. Anyway, that's where I am. You do, do whatever you want with the people, but that's where I came to it. I was just like, I think I need to let that Thoughts? Well, just leave a portalette, I guess, and then someone would have to use money for Well, yeah, if you get a portalette, then the monthly fee you pay, oh, they, they service it once a week, they yeah. stock it, they clean it. We do that at the rec park now. We leave uh -huh. a, um, a handicap accessible portalette, sort of, you know, three season. What's the monthly fee? I don't know. Is it? Sorry. Finding that people are respectful with it, yeah, respectful enough, um, and uh, and it does get serviced once a week. So, so just for my history of children, so all I've had the luxury of children yet was it wasn't respected. Um, it, it was tipped over on a regular basis. I, I, I it, it, in the horror story I got through is one day went over to push it back up. As I'm walking up to the door, all these little kids are calling out covered in blue. They had been in it when it got tipped. And so I'm expecting them, like, oh, what are you doing? Like, this is the coolest playhouse. So, yeah, so there's nothing better than standing ankle deep with the dick right. right in one of these things. Nice. Just. So, anyway, back, so, to back to our thing. Would you like to make the motion to take it out? Sure. I, I mean, I'm like, not going to expect that public restrooms are listed at this point. I'll second that motion. Any other discussion? All in favor? Uh, you opposed? Uh, okay. Uh, is it important that we have this be a consensus? No, I don't think so. Okay. I think this is the first time this has happened, so I don't know how I put this in the minutes. Well, you said one declaration. No, one yeah. Right. One, one day. Six minutes, so it's five minutes. Five to eight, one to eight. Seven. So it's Do you have a, uh, yeah. So it's six, seven, right. one. Thanks for helping me work through that. <laughs> okay. Um, next one on the possible takeoff is affordable housing, senior housing. We've had this on here, but we don't have anything for it. So I think it's just got to go, and I don't even think we need a motion because we just don't have anything. I've heard of, I'm sorry. I've, I missed it. Affordable teen. It's, it's yeah. It says affordable housing slash senior housing. You know there is senior housing on that. Yeah. But I mean, the, this this yeah. came up as like everyone yeah, says we need it. Comes up over it comes up proposal, right? Everywhere. So I think we just put it in the narrative. I think say people like, don't have that awareness that there is. Yeah, and, and I thought we left our last meeting. That's what we were doing with the, the housing aspect of it. Was the, well, right. Same. It was like the mental health and the, the housing. We know it's a problem. Oh, now he had fixed it. This, yeah. I mean, the plan to change not in this time period, no. window and a dollar, and then I'm not fixed the problem. All right. Um, so we good with just letting that one go? No. Uh, I don't think we need to keep going because there's nothing to work on. Okay. And then the last one is um, solar panels on the town or school properties make the town electric very power lines. Um, so um, this, uh, Ian Albinson wasn't able to make the last meeting, but he had read the minutes um, and this list, and he said, um, just wanted to make sure that we knew that um, A, the town um, has a significant buy into the um, solar panels on 116 South. And so the town, the municipality, you know, like our town government covers their electric costs through solar already. And that the select board is committed to putting solar panels on any new town constructed buildings moving forward. So from a town standpoint, there's that. And then he pointed out that we have no control over what happens on the school properties. So we could recommend that to the school and that's a good idea, but that that's not, unless we're gonna spend our town ARPA money to put solar panels on Mount A Union School District. On schools. Exactly. Um, so, um, there was that, and then um, I don't know about the very property lines or very power lines, but 
uh, we don't have an estimate on that. So I just wanted to make sure I communicated that information. Doesn't mean we need to take this off the list, but we just might want to be more clear about it, what we would like to see. If we feel like it's important to vary the power lines, we should probably kind of figure out what that looks like cost-wise. Um, but it sounds like the town is you know, moving in the right direction already with solar for their own electric needs. Um, so we should make a recommendation to the school and then decide what we want to do with the Barry the Power Lines thing. I mean, personally, I'm not sure what Barry the Power Lines gives. Yeah, I don't know what, what, yeah, what is that. I mean, they don't fall down in the wind. Yeah. Uh, what else? It's, it's aesthetic. It's aesthetic. Yeah. Well, and then, then before we bury the Power Lines, Power Lines need to be upgraded. I think there are more. You make, you make a motion to take the whole deal off? Sure. All of line 57, which is for solar panels, school properties, better tower lines. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess we take the whole line off. Sure. Other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. Um, the ones in yellow are just highlighted because they had something to do with housing, childcare, or um, transportation, which were our top three. And I say housing because Wren's Nest um, got in touch with me last week and they are amending their proposal. So remember, they had come to us with a proposal to um, build. Uh, facilities so that they could be more permanently based and expand their child care. Um, and one of the things that they're now amending that proposal to do is to include two housing units to house child care workers. Um, because one of the things that they've had trouble with is that they have in the past gotten funding for an AmeriCorps um, worker to um, work in their child care, but then the AmeriCorps person didn't come because they couldn't find housing. So um, that she was like, I hope that's not going to make our um, proposal no longer be valid to you. And I was like, well, I can't speak for the committee, but I think it would probably make it even more attractive um, because it's um, adding, would it have two units of housing to, um, to the community? And I think I read their proposal at some point, but they how, much, sent it, how much did they ask? They had asked us for $200,000. I said, how much more would you need? She said, probably double that. Um, I randomly put in $300,000 here because I said, so we're not going to give you half our money. But, um, you know, so. And how big is their child care now? You know, they don't have rent water or no stupid. They're going to build someplace? Yes, they, they have a contract on a land and a contract on a land. And so they're making the application to the state for ARPA money um, for child care um, and they are using our money or hoping to use our money as a matching grant. So um, they're, this, uh, this hits all of our boxes. It leverages additional money to the community. Um, it um, you know, addresses child care and housing. Um, you know, I, I think it's, it's our biggest ticket item, uh, but uh, but I think that that's, uh, I think that's fine. Anyway, so, so that's why those are yellow. I just wanted, because I was going through to say, do we have any programs? Like, is there anything on here that does housing, child care, or transportation? And those are the ones that did something that way. So, so one update on the bus shelters. Uh, I think you should break that from the list altogether. Um, myself and Valerie have been working with the group that potentially have three bus shelters for the community. Right. So, and Ian and I actually followed up on that for Valerie while she was out with Mary Claire. Yeah. But we will have to put in pat the pads or prepare the things. So where where is that? Yeah. So we, we put in fifteen thousand for if there needs to be site work or concrete. They have to be accessible. Um. So you know, if there's a sidewalk, there has to be. Anyway, but yeah. I think that we're going to get the bus shelters. All right, cool. That's great. Yeah, that's amazing. So I, I want to return to um, childcare. 
with Bristol Family Center, a line item here, as well as Wren's Nest. And I'm just wondering if we have any idea what the need is. Is providing funding for both of these excessive? Well, Bristol Family Center, they, want, they wanted money to upgrade their. Sorry, didn't hear what you said. They could take more children in if they had. Right. So the Bristol Family Center's request was for a sprinkler system that would allow them to expand their space if they had the whatever approved sprinkler system is. Um, so that would add more child care. Um, but, um, but the answer, Helen, is no, we wouldn't saturate the child care market. We'd still be short. Um, and particularly for infants. So because Rensness isn't proposing infant care. Bristol Family Center does have infant care, and they might be able to expand that somewhat. Um, but so yeah, we still need them. We don't have actual numbers. We just know that eighty-two percent of infants are likely to need child care in Addison County. That's not broken down into that was from the Let's Grow Kids um, report. It's a huge number. Eighty-two percent of our county <laughs> needing infant care. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks for addressing that. Um, so the next thing in conversation about this list is to move to column D um, and just look at these wildly napkin sketch numbers. Okay, so just to be clear that none of these numbers is really very good. Um, but to the extent that we have it, some of them are better than others. So the rescue squad upgrades is 130,000. That's from the horse's mouth. So um, that's actually from the rescue squad. Um, the grant writing position um, they put in at fifty thousand um, dollars, and if we went ahead with that, um, you know, yes, we would be breaking our rule of an ongoing fund, but the idea would be that it might fund itself. Or I'm confused by that one so much. If it's going to fund itself. Why are we funding? I mean, well, because you need to have the person here yeah. because yeah. they have to write a grant. For the next year, right. right? They're not going to get a grant that retroactively pays right. them, right. And, and, and they probably won't get a grant. So unlike academia, yeah. where yeah. Uh, yeah. you write out a, a yeah. proposal and you have a percentage of it for administration, yeah. this fund this wouldn't do that. But if the person was getting paid fifty thousand and they wrote grants in excess of a hundred or more, then they would essentially be funding their position, um, and it would be worthwhile. Mm -hmm. But that would be for the select board to decide. We have one skeptical face. <laughs> oh, not skeptical. I, I just think it's an, I, I, I'm not certain why, how ARPA money, this, this, this is an ARPA issue. Like, I, it, it, this is a question that a few folks have had that they wanted to do this, and then that she wanted into suggesting that. That's my only complaint with it. I get it. it I mean, again, this is something the select board would have to approve. Right. So, I, mean, I don't know if that's a right, fair characterization of this process. No, but I'm going to. Especially I, given the way that we all surveyed, no, no, scored these surveys, no. and it's now the second highest yeah. according to survey. So, to, to suggest that, that it was shoe, like, I, I take a little bit. I don't know. I'm going to cheat. I just thought I that. see, though, Chris, like, I feel like um, the grant writing position can actually address a whole bunch of things that we're putting in our narrative and our tier two. So, you know, we're going to the select board and we're saying, we got 500 ideas. We've got <laughs> 50 of them that we think are valid. We want you to fund 20. These 30 ideas, something ought to happen with those in the next 10 years. What are you gonna do about that? And they're gonna say, we're not gonna do anything about it because we don't have any time. And Valerie's up to her eyeballs. And, mm -hmm. you know, so I feel like, Funding the grant writing assistant, we say, we want you to do all 50 of these. Use the ARPA money on this, have that grant writer get their butt in gear and fund this. Mm -hmm. um, I, I see it as a way to bring a ton of money to town. Um, and I my concern would be, could we even buy her? Could we even find somebody who would well, do it? But if we could, um, I, so I know what you're saying. And I, and I agree that we said we didn't want to do an, an ongoing thing, but I feel like this is one area where I think it could be a game changer or not a game changer more. I think it just could make our, our list mm -hmm. get 
get it done. Right. But right. anyway, right. that's that's me. Well, what Ian said to me was, you know, it falls to him because nobody else really wants to do it. The grant writing, and that's not part of his job description, and he's very very busy. You know, he does he does a lot of stuff for the town. Well, a lot of volunteers write grants for the town, and they have. Yep. For I mean, you know, oh. time. Yep. And so when you have volunteers who are able and willing to do that, it's awesome. And when you don't, oh well. Well, but if you offered a position, maybe somebody would. That's it. what we could hope. I think it'd be or awesome. To try. And my other concern is, so we we seed it with fifty grand, and it doesn't work, and it doesn't pan out. I know it's sometimes that happens. I know it, the other things as I look at them here, it's like these are things we know as we look at them that this X, Y, and Z, these things are actually going to happen. We see things that when it's done, we this is it might work. I, I just have a, a could you say that within like a year if it's not well, we still we'd only fund it for a year anyway. That's all yeah, we can no, 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 no. but even within would, that year, if you can't like. There's nobody to step up that that money would go oh, somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah, so we we lose it if we don't. Right. So where would we? Yeah. Is well, we wouldn't use it because um, they could funnel it to some other thing. I mean, it's not like we'd actually lose the money. It, the money will get. It's if they can't hire somebody, they'll know. Uh, Jessica's got her hand up. Sorry, I forget to look up there sometimes. <laughs> no worries. Um, you know, normally I would 100% agree with Chris just because I, I hate funding like positions that are ongoing expenses with benefits and things like that out of grant funding like this. Um, but in this particular case, it might actually be something good to do for the year. And I guess when I look at all of these ideas that we've come up with and that we plan to pass to the select board, we already know that ARPA funding is only going to fund a small portion of this, but they're really good ideas. And if we hired somebody to be a grant writer for the year, there's tons of money coming in right now through all these different programs. Um, and, you know, I just... It's just hard for me to imagine that we have the capacity to apply for all of these grants. And so it might be worthwhile to think about this as an ARPA funded position to find funding for these extra ARPA ideas that we just can't fund through our limited funding. So that would be the only thing I would suggest is that normally I would agree that you don't want a staff position, but in this case, it might be seen as sort of part of moving these ideas to the select board to say, let's also try to fund a position that can find all of these sources of funding, like the EV stations and things like that. We know that there's state and federal money coming in for that broadband expansion. And to be able to have somebody write grants for the town of Bristol and, and you know, divert some of that money to our community might be really helpful. So that's my two cents. <laughs> yeah, or, or I'll just add on, even if it was just conceptualized, at least in that first year, is seeking matching funding for the things that the, the select board's trying to fund, mm -hmm. right? I mean, these are back of the envelope calculations, but there's often overages. It got, like if, if their job in that first year was, mm -hmm. this is the list that we want, go find the extra money, right? I mean, it, it's even clear, even with our big ticket Red's Nest, right? Like even that's not enough and they're mm -hmm. using that to leverage other money. I if, if I remember earlier, you know, one of the things we wanted to do was try to leverage the funds. Mm -hmm. This is essentially paying somebody to leverage it for us. Um, and it might not work. You're absolutely That's right. True. right. And again, it goes against one of my, my very hard core core things is an ongoing added expense to the community. And that's, so that's part of, I think, where I have the hardest time with this is it's not a one and done. I mean, yes, technically it is. We're just going to dump 50 grand. But the following year, it's picked up by the taxpayers. And, and that's where I have the hardest time with that. So that's my two cents on it. How do you want to go ahead? Do you want to, you know, I mean, like when we voted to take things off, we said there was one nay. Um, do we want to just have a narrative that say, although we have concerns, or do we want to make it stronger than that? Well, I, I think it's it's fine. I okay. mean, I voiced my concern. Mm -hmm. We the the general consensus feels that it's going to move forward, and I'm good with that. I just okay. I was able to voice my concern. Okay. okay. Um, the next amount, I think that 55 came directly from Turning Point. It was a request that they made. Mm -hmm. um, they are getting other ARPA monies. Um, so, but from other towns, from other towns, right? Didn't they? No, ask, but also from other sources. Mm -hmm. I think other ARPA well, sources. Oh, oh, okay. We can leave this money as is, mm -hmm. um, you know, and just let the select board 
deal with it as they may. Um, but that was that where that money came from. I've written in the 90,000 for Bristol Family Center um, for their, can you type that in there now? Yeah, no. Can. Or was, I'll, I'll, was the just, turning point money for anything in particular or just because they were asking for more money just as practice? Just the, I, just I, I know it sounds terrible, but I know that they're on the line item on the town uh -huh. budget every year they asked everybody else and i just couldn't remember if this was for right. something and special Rob, you're right. or just they'll be money. they'll be on town meeting request as well i think that they were saying that because addiction issues were so exacerbated by covid that they were seeking additional money and i don't remember if it was for you know more staff i'm sorry i don't well, remember i can't remember that i don't i don't think i read their proposal but i talked to a couple of board members about it and they at that point, they were talking about they want they need another building. Their space isn't mm -hmm. big enough, and so they were talking about buying the old St. Mary's elementary, oh, yeah. elementary school, but it needed to be renovated. So they were trying to collect funds towards that. Now maybe there's other think this others of two. Yeah, it may not have been in the proposal, but they, you know, I mean, drug addiction is a terrible problem, it even in nice bucolic Bristol. It's yes, terrible oh, for sure. Yeah, and we shouldn't minimize. And it's definitely been a COVID exasperated. Yeah. Exacerbated. Yeah. Anyway, I, I say we just leave it. That's the way it came in, and they can leave it. They don't have to do. This isn't a dictation of any type. It's just a ballpark. Uh, Rens, I put up to three hundred. They haven't come with a fresh proposal. They may before we actually end going to the select board. Mm -hmm. um, the bus shelters. I think one broad question, which is, like. If we if we give the select, are we going to give the select board these numbers? Is that our plan? Or is this just for us? Well, so great question. We haven't decided that, and we don't have to. But here's so here's where we are in the process. I wanted to look at these numbers so that we can have a conversation about how we move forward with our proposal to the select board. Because if we have napkin numbers, that helps us decide: can we propose all of these, sure. or not all of them? Yeah. Um, so that's just sort of where I'm heading with this. And so whether we actually put numbers to it when we give it to the select board or not, I think it will be helpful for them if we do, um, such as it is whatever we have. Um, but they may not be these exact numbers. Yeah, I, I only worry because I just worry on some level. We, I don't want to send like a message that we're sort of tacitly approving. Like we an think amount. that an amount, like it, it yeah. should get this much, whereas this should get that okay. much. Um, and I don't know if that's just a way that we convey the message. Um, I know, that because, like, you know. That was like a pretty loose hundred grand increase, which might totally be justified. Right. But if it's ten percent of our budget, that yes. we're like, yeah, we're gonna just do that as well. Like, I don't want that to be the message that necessarily is sent. Okay. Right. I, I think giving them a sense of what it might cost, and maybe just mm -hmm. a disclaimer that this ultimately, is, yeah, though, exactly asked for or um, considered possible amount. Yeah, exactly. And then they should, have and then, and then, we can talk about the wording too of yeah. the report to them. Um, Perfect. Yeah. So yeah. I just wanted to. To clarify Order, have you um like did a a quick addition of any, any of this? Yes, that's the like, that's down there at the bottom, which now we've taken oh. some things out and put some in, but it's uh okay, a yeah. little over 1.1 million. So we only have 1.2, right? We have 1.1. Mm -hmm. Oh, 1.1. 1. 1. So anyway, so we're like 30,0. Yeah. We're yeah, so bus shelters 15. Um that we took out that one air conditioning for Holly Hall. I don't know oh, that. I think the 50,000 was actually air conditioning for Holly Hall. We don't, we don't really know. Nobody has any idea. Hmm. You know, I think that is a, a it's a, a kind of an infrastructure thing, yeah. but that would benefit the whole. Time. Yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah. Just keep going. Uh, yeah. Library at your classroom. That is a number from the library. Mason's elevator. That's a number from the Mason's electric charging stations is an estimate of our matching grant for this state. Grant program. Uh, How many skate is that park. for? What? How many is I that for? I don't know. Do you know? No idea. Can't remember. <laughs> okay. Or I'm not, I don't think I ever knew, actually. Is that important, Rob? Do you want me to ask? Well, I was just curious. It was plural. So I was curious. It's and just, just want to know. I will ask that question. Uh, the skate park. That says fifteen thousand for a roof. I think it was one hundred and fifty thousand. Fifteen thousand? No, I, I thought when I they were looking more in the fifty grand range to resurface it and rebuild mm -hmm. the structure. That would that. make sense. Oh, I think this was just to like put in a little mini one for littler kids. Yeah, oh, no. but yeah. It's yeah. to repair what's there. And that's the no, ice, that's skating, ice skating, which I'd like to talk about. 
if you have any questions about that. So I would be, I personally would like to see that number just on our numbers here. 50 grand, I think, is a realistic number to mm -hmm. bring that park up to what they need. Because it needs to be, the entire thing needs to be resurfaced. Exactly. All of the, almost all of the structures need to be rebuilt. Okay. Yeah. So we'll change that to 50. Uh, the pedestrian path along Pine Street, we have no numbers. So can I say something about that? So I thought that the committee, the, there's a pedestrian bike, bike committee, mm -hmm. and I thought that committee. they were doing some work on that. There was a study done, right? Wasn't yes. there study on a sidewalk for yeah. Pine Street? Yeah. That was the Many Munsell. Years. That was the Munsell scope. No, no, that's uh, that's a different. Oh, okay. Two, they but. do them all the time. There's study scoping sites. There was a Munsell one. Okay. So we, there was one done for Pine Street. Because I thought the idea was to have the so I'm gonna the wordage I, I don't know, um, white lines, so that when cars come and you're walking in the right, just like uh, a, a pedestrian right. Area. So is that what that is, or that this is something else in addition to that? So what's, the the theory behind it is we're tearing up Pine Street next year. Okay. Putting a water line in. Okay. The the town didn't budget to widen that road six eight feet. Instead of trying to put a sidewalk down the road, if you widen that road six to eight feet, then paint a pedestrian <laughs> stripe. But there's no money in that in that project when they paved it. And that project's it. already planned. Yeah, and, and so, the project itself is paid for. Right. So, so I know just and, need an extra bit of money. And it was there was some pushback initially from Valerie on it, and I have, and then okay. she's out at the moment. So I would I felt that that would be a, a very simple. Do you have any uh, idea what a ballpark we could throw at that would be? Pavement there. And again, since they're repaving already, I mean, I, you're probably 100 grand. You're so here's the thing with that is um, we did hear a lot about walking in town. Oh, yeah. And when I was at the dump that day, a lot of people talked oh, yeah. about walkers and, you know, pedestrian path on Pine Street. The study said that to put a sidewalk on Pine Street was going to be millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. So it got completely panned mm -hmm. right. but now we have to do this waterline work anyway and if we could piggyback on that so if we gave the select board a cherry you know to sort of dangle as look when you're doing this already because timing wise now can you do it right so we would just simply yes you're just putting extra space, space just made a little wider and then visually distinguish it it's not gonna be a curb it's not gonna be a sidewalk so so that when if like if a large truck had was trying to get yeah. into um the, the uh, works, Bristol yeah. works, they still have the ability to use it. The other thing it hopefully would do would be those that are walking down that road, yeah, keep them keep stay them, in one corral place. them in one spot. I mean, I walk down that a few times a week, and you look down it, and it's just like that. Yeah, people. it's like yeah, they all just stay. I mean, well, we're they want side of the road. That's what you're <laughs> saying. I see. So the project is already happening. This is just a. Get a little just a fine tuning. Just right. a fine tuning. Take advantage of the opportunity. Well, I feel like that is something. I mean, there's so many people that are on Pine Street walking. It increases. Okay. It's such a good thing. I'll, I'll add clarity. Like, do something when you're putting in the water lines to make pedestrians safer. Oh yeah, that yeah. sounds great. Okay. There should be a different design on the paint paint job. Right. Yeah. Uh, we threw in five thousand for the farmers market ag support. The accessibility on trails is blank. Um, so from a Bristol Trail Network standpoint, um, uh, I've been working for a couple of years on a 10-year plan to create um, genuinely accessible recreation paths on town properties. So where we are right now is um, I had a very tentative study that uh, regional planning did looking at the parks that I was interested in. Um, the next step is I'm working with a group at the state that has technical assistance money available to for health equity. Um, and that will probably then lead to an engineering study, which would then lead to construction mm -hmm. estimates and then grants for doing it. So if there was going to be any money for this, it would be for a, um, an engineering study to evaluate multiple parks. Mm -hmm. I had one engineering study done at uh, Memorial Park. It was about five or six thousand dollars so uh, what do you think six thousand dollars per park for an engineering study for accessible paths does that sound normal that would be probably close okay so 30 or forty thousand dollars here would be construction uh or uh what do you call those engineering studies. yeah 
Yeah, it's just gonna be a study on it on the front end. That's all it is. Because that's all we can do, especially in the window we have. Exactly. Again, oh yeah, we, we could never get to um, actual construction in our ARPA window. Okay. But it would be somebody going out, looking at the land, surveying it, saying you need X, Y, and Z in order to make this more accessible. Right, so you get an engineering design and then you can go to a contractor and say, give me a construction estimate to do so this engineered plan. So it's all the checks. That exactly. That's all what the boxes that need to be. Can you accessibility? Don't need a wheelchair anytime soon. Okay. So, so you're saying 40,000? Yeah. And, uh, and that doesn't, like, commit us to an ongoing no. expense, but it also doesn't get us anything That's unless good. there is an expense. That's a good point. So I'm, I mean, I don't really know my thought. I, I think it's a great idea, frankly, but in the context of how we want to position this, like if that's a necessary first step so that we can actually do that. And we right. think that there's a chance people would actually do that or the town would actually do that, or we could find grants to do that. Right. Then it seems really valuable, but otherwise it feels like it has the, the capacity of we spent the money, we got the engineering study, that would be amazing, but, but we don't. Well, yeah, and one of the arguments of our money for this is that um, getting engineering grants is utterly unsexy and there's no grant money available for it. Yeah. The fact that I got one grant thing for it was a, a glorious fluke, sure. um, and the only reason was Memorial Park is closed. Um, and so mm -hmm. this private foundation in Middlebury that has connection here was like, we'll fund that. Yeah, hmm. so, I mean, it's one that needs to be upgraded. Yeah. Like, that's mm -hmm. a huge well, this won't fix that problem. Uh, uh, so the PA for the 4th of July, which would hopefully be a mobile one that uh, the town could use in other venues as well. Um, yeah, I talked to Meredith. That was what they thought for. Mm -hmm. To replace their very aging rapid PA. How much does it order cost? 75. Oh, um, and then a message board, um, which could be somewhere in town, maybe Fire Station or maybe Walgreens Shaw's. There were different ideas that came in. Um, maybe twenty thousand dollars. Yes. Yeah, what we looked okay. at it in the past. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the roof <laughs> over the ice rink. Please explain this to me. Well, because of the snowfall, if we are going, people have to go over and shovel it, and so you know it falls to volunteers, and people just wanted relief. Well, yeah. also when you and when it, you spray when you flood and you put ice down mm -hmm. and it freezes, so that's a really big volunteer effort. And um, you don't want snow falling. On it's it. not just the snow, it's the sun. So mm -hmm. when the sun beats on it, you get melty spots. Right. Um, so the ice gets wrecked. And if there were a roof over the rink, then it could be uh, a pavilion space that could be used for a farmer's market in the yes. summer, or it could, it could have more three season use because now it's a covered space. So like think COVID, think yeah. outdoor social distancing. What type of circulation. It's, it's just a roof. It's just a roof. Just a roof. Yeah. So there's um, still wind. There's still rain getting exactly. in there. Sure. So yeah. it's not, it's not, it would just be a pavilion. It would just be but a it would pavilion. be better than nothing. But I just need to say, uh, this number is not a real number. Because wasn't it like seven hundred fifty thousand or eight hundred fifty thousand when we got a proposal? Well, that was to do like a whole like. Oh wait, did we get a proposal on this? Yeah, way on, early on. Really? Yeah. Was it to enclose the ice rink or to cover it? Well, it might have been to include. I think that was to enclose it. Maybe that's. But what it the roof is still super expensive. Um, it's not yeah. town property. Hmm. Uh, yeah, actually, is it? Don't even go there. But, yeah, don't even start. Um, so I just, I just, it, it's a big chunk of money, and it for three hundred thousand relative to three hundred thousand for Ren's Nest, it's it's a hard sell. So um, this is one where I feel like um, it's very popular in the community. Yeah. It is. Um, but I'm not sure that I, as an ARPA committee member, and I have to say I'm also on the rec club board, so hey, I'd love to take the ARPA money, but I'd rather see the grant writer go find other recreation ARPA money mm -hmm. than um, spend this ARPA money. But that's, I just wanted to put that out there. So I'm wearing two hats on that one, mm -hmm. um, but I'm actually not pitching it. Yeah, and, and I'll get on my soapbox on the roof over there. It's um, also on the rec club board once upon a time. Yeah, for a long time, and maintain that ice rink for about 20 years. Um, one of the Biggest concerns of putting a roof. One of the nicest parts about an outdoor skating rink yeah. is on those nice 20 degree sunny days. Gorgeous. Nice. 20 yeah. degrees in the shade mm -hmm. on ice is just cold. Right. And in the wind over the house. So now you're just cold. So yeah. that's been my, one of my biggest concerns with putting a roof over. It changes the dynamic of, the, of what it is. It's an mm -hmm. outdoor rink. Unfortunately, we poured a slab. 
we put up boards yeah. 20 plus years ago and now we just need to figure out how to use it correctly. Mm -hmm. and yeah. the last two winners have actually gotten used a lot because the rec club worked in collaboration the high school started clearing the snow for us and oh. the elp program had volunteers who helped with the ice because they were using it so hopefully that will continue but um I, does anybody want to make a motion to take this out or helen rob mike diane anybody want to lobby to keep it in i kind of like the idea but whatever i mean i kind of like important. the idea too but not it yeah. Several hundred thousand. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. I'm shocked that it cost it would cost that much to put a roof up. My my devil's advocate point of view is that at least it's going more towards the town than the rent's nest, which is pretty private and it's gone right. from the town. That's true. Only Although, hoping to reap side benefits of them continuing to do business. That's a good point. Good point. Yeah. I, I mean, although it's a lot of money for a roof that seems like it's mixed benefit apart from main maintenance of the ice maybe a committee could get together and we it. have one we, no, have, we have a committee it's not but but yeah i mean i think you know get all the carpenters in town to build it you know a roof raising raising that's a good idea i'll take that to the rec club well again this falls under like if there is a grant writing a grant writer mm -hmm. then they could you know perhaps find money for something like that i mean I personally think we should just strike it at this point in time. I, I think it's a huge volume. Do I hear a motion? Sure. I'll make a motion to strike the roof on the ice rink. Anyone second? No, I'll, I'll second that with the idea that it kind of falls into that narrative, narrative. section. Mm -hmm. I think it's a it's a really great idea. I, but I saw that number two and I went, ooh. And, I think that number's low. Yeah, I do too. Um, yeah. any other discussion? Am I breaking any hearts here? Okay, all in favor of removing? Aye. Yeah. Opposed? Okay. Well, we thought brought our number back to 1.1. One. Do you like that? Okay, uh, the bike racks are super cheap. They should just do that in a heartbeat. Um, dog park, um, I think, is already moving along. Oh. Um, and so that price went down. Um, where where what was the price on it? I don't know if it's a secret. Is it a secret? Oh, okay. It's been, it's been generally discussed. Okay. In the village, somewhere yeah, up behind oh. Hutton Hall. It's already got a fence. It's a nice yes. big grassy area. It's already on the mowing budget. Yay. So, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Maybe the other spot. It's been discussed many times. It's also been down on Basin Street. But if that, that was my suggestion. Well, and I've said that for years. But in, in with the theory, what I, I like no parking about, down what I like about Hutton Hall is it's there. We can see so the close. concept. And if it's used or and it's not big enough, then we look at where do we, get, strong, yeah. where do we move to a new space and, and create a larger. So I think five grand to get it to the fence, yeah. the fence repaired. Updated. So tell me, tell me what the advantage is to having a dog park. Your dog, dog can be off leash and can socialize. With so, dogs. you know, we live in a rural state. We're surrounded by nature. People can take their dogs anywhere. And no, run. no, you actually not in the village. Not no, the leash laws, right? And there, well, actually, Bristol doesn't have a leash law. Doesn't our law say that technically it needs to be under voice command? I believe so. But yeah. um, but no, you you can't take your dog anywhere. I mean, well, I, I mean that that was a bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, so, 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 like, there are many go, places to take dogs. Mm, there are some places. not in towns and cities and villages, but no, there um, there are some places you can take dogs. But anyway, people who live in the village like having dog parks. Helen? No, I, I think I like the idea of a dog park. I missed where you said it might be located. No, nope, can't hear you. Behind Howden Hall. Behind Howden Hall. Do you know you know where Howden Hall is? Yeah. 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 So there's a grassy, what is it? Almost a third of an acre back there. Oh, it's tiny. Okay, so we're talking about a very small dog park. You could throw a you could throw a tennis ball, but um, your uh, you know your foxhound is not going to have a lot of room. Perfect for small dogs. Small and medium. Wow, well, I would propose trying to find more a, a bigger space. The proponent, whoever is um, advocating or proposing this, I think that. If we think a dog park is fine, we just leave it in there and that's not really our problem. 
yeah, I, I think that the, the plan again is that they start with town hall, prove a concept, and if it isn't large enough, there are other opportunities in the community where they can you know. And it might limit the dog poop at school playground where the kids are the running around field. in the rec field and the park where the green where the kids are running. And you want to propose putting up dog poop bag dispensers? Oh, okay. So, so yes, yes. no. <laughs> but here's the issue with that. So, my, where my daughter lives in, in Pittsburgh, they have the, the building is very dog friendly. And mm -hmm. there's hundreds of apartments in the same. But they also have just about every green space, there's a minimum of two dispensers everywhere. We trash bucks from the inside. They also have building maintenance where that twice a day and empties the bucket. So that's the issue is you put all the dispenser bags you want, and then people pick up their poop, they tie it up, and set it right there at the bottom of it. That's why we need game cameras. Who are those people? Like everybody in the world says, who are those people? But somebody must be that person. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever met anybody in your life who would be there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Private property. There was a spot we, we were driving through to go out looking at some hunting stuff. And we noticed there was like six or eight little dog poop bags on the corner of this person's property. And I'm like, and the people who own it, I'm like, they don't pick up their, it's their land. They just let their dog run free on it. And coming back through, there was a woman walking her dog and carrying her little bag and stopped and put it with her other ones. Huh. <laughs> what are you doing? Huh. Well, well, I don't want to carry them all the way home. I'm like, so the landlord, I'm like, what did she, what did she say? Well, well, oh, a lot of well us. Let me just draw. <laughs> I will say that I've walked my dog and she's gone to the bathroom before our walk is finished and I've left my little bag, but I collect it and then bring it home with me. Same here. And so. I get it that like maybe you forgot one day. But anyway, okay, <laughs> and we digress. Yeah, yeah, yeah we did. Sorry. We're doing very well. Bus for rec department 35,000. That was on the list. Do you want to vote on the dog park? I don't, we don't have to vote. We're not voting on everything. I'm just okay. telling you about All the right. numbers. Okay. We're only voting if we take something off okay. or change it. Uh, was, that, and, was that 35 from them? I think so, yeah. Okay. It seems cheap when a new pickup is 50,000, you know? I can't remember. But for our ballpark napkin purposes, I think that's what they said. Yeah, I believe so too. Uh, and then we threw in $10,000 to support potential zoning changes to increase density, increase sewage and parking in the event that the planning commission needs additional money to extend their planning work. And that was our list, which brings us um, to something around a million dollars. Um, and again, we may or may not give these actual numbers to the select board, but the purpose of this exercise was if we're good with this list right now, then I'm proposing that this is the list that we um, tidy up a little bit and send out to the community through Front Porch Forum in a ranking. So we can say, hey, everybody, thanks for all your ideas and support and input last summer. Here is the narrowed list of recommendations we're going to make to the select board. Please click here to put them in your preferred order. Oh. So they can take these 18 items like and that. you, 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 and all of our neighbors can on the form move them around. So you'll move them and put them in an order and then we'll collate that. So we'll give this list to the select board and say, select board, here is the list of things we want you to fund with the ARPA money in the order that shows the collective ranking of community members who chose to weigh in. Mm -hmm. Please start at the top and work to the bottom anywhere where you can get other monies to support it and supplant it, roll the money down. But if you can't get other monies, fund it and then move down. Yep. Does that make sense? I percent. No, it doesn't make sense. No, I, I think it does. I just didn't, I just didn't remember if we, we had, were, were totally set on like the instructions being because people, this was the ranking of people that that was the prioritization that we thought the select board should also fall. I, I we, don't, we don't have to. So yeah. I'm suggesting that we do this ranking and we look at the community I, needs I things, the, and then we can maybe massage it a little bit before we get to the select board. Yeah. But yeah. that's the gist. Yeah, um, just because it seems strange because I don't know exactly how many people will weigh in. And, right. And, exactly. And, yeah, Everybody. You know what the yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So, um, I think you're right. And I actually, yeah. I, and to your point, that's part of the reason why I did the yellow yeah. is because exactly. I, I feel like, um, and I think that there, the other thing is that we might say to the select board, the yellow you have to do, 
And then like for crying out loud, buy the bike racks, right? You know, like take the little things and be like, just knock it off. Yeah. Like don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah. And it was so, so yeah, that's what we'll talk about next month. Perfect. Yeah. Then I have no concerns. Which, which leads us very nicely along our agenda is, um, so we've discussed the list. Um, that's our process to collect public input. And mm -hmm. if you guys are good, I'll just take this list and I'll yep. do that. And that'll go out on Front Porch Forum nice. um, in two weeks and we'll get that, or a week and we'll get that back. Okay. And um have that and then the only other thing i had before we hear from jessica's students um is um oh well one thing on this so remember that the amount so it came out to around a million dollars or so um i just want to put this idea out there and you guys can be like no or oh interesting or yes absolutely <laughs> bristol has 1.1 million dollars you always probably read the article in the addison independent right uh, Bristol doing much more engagement mm -hmm. with the community than any other place. Our select board, bless their little hearts, has sat on the money and not spent it out from under us and has been very, very patient, which other select boards have not even considered mm -hmm. being. Yeah. Um, they may have some priorities or thoughts that aren't reflected in any of this information. And um, I had an idea, which is what if we said to them, Bristol has $1.1 million. Point one, y'all have at it. Oh. Do what you want to do. Take a million and do this. It's just a thought. Hmm. Well, I think we should address that issue because I have this fear that we're going to give them that recommendations and then they'll, they'll just do what they want. I don't think they and will. And that's what the people because have said to me in the community. Is, yeah. What, what difference does it make? They're going to do what they want. They're I don't think they will because there's I've too seen, much. Like everybody on the select board, and I don't think no, it's no, going to happen. No, I've, seen it. I've seen it happen, uh -huh. but um, I don't think they will here because A, there's been a lot of visibility. Mm -hmm. um, we did that. Like we created that visibility yes. um, and not just in town, uh, but also through the county. Mm -hmm. So I think that they've gotten kudos okay. for, for their process. Yeah in IE, they got kudos for letting us do our work. And I think that that would be a little more egg on their face than, okay. I, don't, I don't think they will. And if they do, we'll, we'll scream and yell. But, um, but I would be willing to sort of have a part of, part of that, but it's just a thought. Anyway, hmm. I'm, I'm curious, Rob, Helen. So part well, one is 100,000? 100,000. I think, ahead, I think the, the values that are, um, in the chart in column D, many of them are approximates and they may come out to be more. And if we give, quote unquote, give the select board, um, whatever, $100,000 to do whatever they want with, we may find that, oh, well now we, we can't afford the bike racks and whatever. That could so be. Just because these are our approximations, I hate to, bind up the other money which would mean then having to redo this list because we have to eliminate stuff because we can no longer afford it i mean i i understand your your rationale and it'd be really nice to know what the slack board is thinking if they already have um a list in their minds and they're just hoping that the the items that they want are also on our list i have no idea well i i've asked valerie that several times Sounds like um, not dramatically so, and they were all encouraged to participate in our process. Um, so, you know, they had the opportunity at any meeting to tell Valerie and I did, and uh, to tell me the times I went to send a postcard or tell us or go to um, And the only one who did, to my knowledge, was the kid. Um, and the only thing that I think he was talking about that I'm aware of that's not on the list. Is that the town uh, financial management system um, and some of the software systems are really, really directly out of date and implementation? And that's not a sexy project that it makes it sound like. I can't remember what the other things were. I mean, if you remember any other You guys, you're. I can't hear much of anything that you're saying. 
you're coming in and out. The, the sound tonight has been pretty awful. I don't know what's different about previous meetings versus tonight. Just and Rob, 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 are you having trouble? Hmm. Can we check <laughs> our clips? Uh, it's not, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, okay. yeah. Well, it's different uh, than usual. Well, proceed. I mean, sure. I heard about 10% of what Porter said in response to what the select board is planning to do. It's plugged in. It's... Uh, I'll repeat what I said. Is, uh, I don't think that they had a whole lot of ideas that aren't on our list already somewhere. The only one that um, I know of was the idea of um, updating the town's financial management um, and, um, uh, you know, IT system. Right. And again, where, where I was going to go. Um, having done software implementation, there's no way they will implement a brand new financial software package of the scope and scale they need before this money's due. Okay. I just, that's a two year project. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I've done this for, did that for a long time. I, I, I was just going to. So. My thought is that we should not do that. It kind of goes against what we're doing here. Uh, if you want to address it, first line of whatever they're presented with should be this committee acknowledges the select board is not beholden to anything on this list or anything we say. And let that be the caveat, but just say here's the list of what we present. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. something similar. Mm -hmm. I like that approach. I, Porter, I fully understand where you're coming from. And I think in an ideal world, that's a great solution. But I fear it might come off as sort of presumptuous that we get to dictate something that maybe we don't. Yeah. Right. And, okay. and and I would worry that it wasn't our charge. And I, okay. and I hate for them to, to leave with a sour taste in their mouths in the sense of like, they did open this up. They appointed the committee. Okay. Like they engaged in the process. And so maybe to to have that line that says we realize that you're not but we really encourage you to stick with this process that you set up might be a way to, to just keep that goodwill going so that maybe they do something like this again the next time okay. there's a big decision to be made I mean, there's just so much data that was collected yeah. so much work that went into this and then i think it's just going to be so great to put it out there to the community again because i feel like I talked to somebody today. They're like, "When are we? Are we going to hear anything else about it?" And I said, "It's coming. You're going to have a. You're going to have a say. Like you're going to be able to like organize your top choice to your bottom choice." Really? Are you sure? And I was like, "Yes, it's going to happen." <laughs> so I think people are going to be really excited about this opportunity again to have a say in their town's right. government. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay, so. Um, We'll talk in March about the way we present this information to the select board. Um, I'm envisioning that there will be a written report um, with all of the uh, lists and links to the raw data itself so that they can um, you know, look at that way. And I'll get the uh, ranking thing out. Mm. And uh, that's it for our agenda stuff. And then um, we'll hear from Jessica's class. Great. Um... I think you need to allow me to share screen and I will show you what we found. Okay, let me stop my share. I think I just need to make you a host. Yeah, okay. that's the, probably the easiest way. I get so distracted. You're now hosting. Okay. Yep. Okay. So we presented these findings to the Bristol Select Board. Um, so they have seen these results. And basically what we did was we just shared with them, um, you know, what we, how we basically collected this data. And, you know, I have to point out that we did this during a semester. So it was fast, <laughs> about like six weeks worth of work. Um, and also we weren't able to really try to get a large response rate. We, you know, sent reminders and things like that, but we just sort of had to take what we could get. Um, so with those caveats in place, um, we tried to figure out 
um, with a survey of citizens in Addison County, select board members in Addison County, and then a deep dive with interviews with select board members in Middlebury, Bristol, Virgins, and Weybridge. Um, and then we also talked to people like the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. They have Katie, their, their ARPA person. Um, so we tried to gather all these sources of information to answer this big question about how are select board members making decisions about spending ARPA money and is there a role for public participation in these decisions? And so um, you all know this data, but it, it's amazing. Some of the select boards are still really struggling just with the process. Um, so this is the, the larger process. And what we saw was that um, most towns have done what Bristol did. Bristol did it first, but the other towns all did the same thing where they sort of rolled that money into their budgets as revenue replacement so that they don't necessarily have to account for all of the ARPA spending. Um, so what we found was um, both Middlebury and Virgins have sort of taken the approach of this money is now in our budget and we're just going to decide how to spend it in the same way that we decide how to budget, right? So it's just yet another revenue stream and there's nothing really that special about it. Um, and so what Middlebury has done is they have already put that money in their town budget. Public Works is using it on their, their budget requests and there's nothing special there, right? So it's just for whatever their normal expenses would be. Um, one thing that they did decide, though, was that they had pulled a little bit of money out for Maple Broadband. But again, you can see these are all infrastructure, public works funding that they're using this money for. Um, for Virgins, they had originally decided that they wanted to do that, um, but they since, I, I don't want to say it's because we have been talking with them a lot, but they are discussing creating a framework like you all have created, like a matrix, trying to talk about what would their goals be, how should they spend this money, and they are, originally they were saying they didn't want public participation, um, but now they're saying that maybe they would like that, so we'll, we'll see when we talk to them on January 10th what they want to do in the future. But basically what they were saying is something similar to what Middlebury Select Board was saying, which is we primarily view this money as part of our budget. It's going to go for infrastructure. But in Virgins, they're also saying more of what you all are saying, which is can we get something more out of this funding rather than just another sidewalk or, or you know, whatever a normal expense would be? Is there something special, some special harm from COVID that we should be able to use this money for? One thing that they're worried about, which you all have been grappling with, is how to prioritize this. There's a lot of things to spend money on. This isn't actually a large source of money if you think about all of the other things they need to fund, like, you know, their water district expenses and, and all of these things. So they're worried about how do you prioritize this money? Do you want the money to cover just one thing or would it just be small amounts of money going for other things? And they're also worried that if they don't commit the money soon with the, the uh, pace of inflation, that they're actually losing money by sitting on it. So there's also a little bit of time pressure that they're, they're feeling there. So that's where they are right now. And so, so far, um, their city manager has proposed a framework for trying to make these decisions. And in the next meeting, they're also going to talk about if they want to get any sort of public input. Um, Waybridge wants public input, but they're really not sure how to get it. And they're also not sure how they want to make these decisions. What they've done so far is um, they have set aside money for uh, Maple Broadband. They're thinking about Turning Point requests, but Turning Point has also put in requests to get the opioid settlement money that the state's getting, which will also go to the municipalities. And so they were they were concerned maybe that since Turning Point will have access to other funds that other things wouldn't, that they didn't necessarily want to use ARPA money for Turning Point if they're going to be, you know, giving them money through these other sources. So they haven't decided how they want to move forward with ARPA money at all. Um, and then for Bristol, you all already know all of this information, so we don't have to go through it. Um, but Bristol is the one that 
has really taken the lead in trying to figure out what sort of priorities we have, how the money should be spent. You know, does it cover one thing or, or is it just seed funding for lots of things? Um, and what's the role of public input? And we've collected a lot of public input. So that's sort of, if, if you think about it on a spectrum, you can see Middlebury's on one end and Bristol's on the other as far as what is the role of public participation and should the money be spent on anything special or just go into the budget. So that's what we saw. And again, these were all interviews with select board members. So these are the people who are the decision makers. Then what we did was surveys to try to see a little bit more of patterns. Um, and you can see here that the that citizens in Addison County are represented in the blue bars and the decision makers, the select board members are in the orange bars. And you can see that there are gaps. So when we're asking people, how should this money be spent? You know, what should it be spent on? You can see that the select boards are saying infrastructure, right? That they think that the money should be spent on infrastructure, but that's not the first choice of most citizens. They're really concerned about affordable housing. They're concerned about childcare. They're concerned about other areas in their life where they have either had more harm due to COVID or maybe just that these things were already not working that well and COVID laid that bare. Right. So they're looking for special kinds of funding. They're, they're not necessarily looking for this money just to be part of the infrastructure budget. So that's an interesting thing is that there's a, a gap in people's ideas about what the money should should go for between select board members and, and average citizens. We also asked community members what kind of harm they had specifically from COVID, so what they experienced. And you can see that a lot of people either lost jobs or lost income, um, but you can also see that they really struggled with child care, health care, broadband, you know, all of these different issues. Um, and so there were real harms from COVID and a lot of these things overlapped. So in the question, we also let people sort of write in some answers for us. And they pointed out things like, even if you lost your job or one parent lost their job or you were losing income, like let's say you're a service worker and all of a sudden you're only working two days instead of five, you couldn't stop paying for childcare because then you would lose your spot and it would go to somebody else and then you'd be on these long waiting lists. So even though you didn't currently have a job, if you plan to work again, you needed to keep paying for that spot. And so a lot of these harms weren't just one thing, but they actually interacted with each other to create some pretty challenging situations for people. So these were the harms then that people were reporting. So when we then turn to this question about public participation, on the left is the select board survey results and on the right is the citizen survey. And so for the select board, you can see that they're saying, you know, we think that public participation is sometimes or mostly important, but not for every decision and it's not the most important thing. So it has a role to play, but, you know, isn't hugely important. Um, and uh, so this is the, the one about public participation. And then um, for the citizen survey, we asked about, you know, how effective is the town in getting public opinion for the distribution of these ARPA funds? And you can see that this, this sort of matches in that the select board doesn't necessarily think that public participation is all that important and people feel that, right? <laughs> so they're saying that, you know, public outreach about, about ARPA funding is not very effective. So they don't necessarily feel like the town's trying to collect information from them. Jessica, do you have a breakout on that for Bristol? Did we get better scores? We did. We did get better scores, but the trends are the same. Yeah. Um, and so when we then asked, um, we asked uh, the select board members about where in the process should public opinion be used, which might be important for the surveys that you're thinking about as well. Um, what we found is that really it's this sort of passive idea of public participation. So the select board thinks that people should be updated about what the select board's discussing, but not necessarily that there should be any other outreach other than that, right? So there should be regular updates as part of the agenda, but not any specific outreach. And so then um, the last question we asked that I, I'm going to cover here was the outreach um, from the select board to the public. Again, you can see that on the left hand side is the select board survey on the right hand side is um, from citizens. And so we were asking them again, you know, what sort of outreach are you doing? And you can see that it again, it's that passive outreach of 
it's a line item on every select board agenda. So Middlebury, Virgins, all of them, they have a line item on every single select board agenda, you know, five minutes discussion of ARPA funding, and there's supposed to be updates there. And so that's the type of outreach that the select board is doing. Um, and so then when we ask people, you know, how many updates are you hearing? I guess this is what Ali was communicating too, right? Is that they don't feel like there's a lot of information. No one really knows if the money has been spent um, or what's happening with the process. So the public doesn't feel all that engaged in the process. So the recommendations then that we had from this idea about how are you deciding and then what is the role of public participation is one is also to try to figure out more about the specific harms of COVID. So not just necessarily what people want money spent on, but also what were the specific harms that they felt from COVID. Um, and that this could help us address that mismatch that we see between the select board and citizens about what the priorities are. Most average people aren't saying that, you know, during COVID, the harm they felt was that their sidewalks weren't good, right? And so that's that's sort of the challenge that we're seeing. Um, and that even if this public input doesn't change the decisions that the select board are making, it would increase a lot of public trust in the process. Um, we, uh, we also asked people if they had shared ideas and in the survey, only a few residents said that they had shared opinions. And so doing more public outreach might be valuable. Um, one thing that we were wondering is, you know, there's only so many people that you can reach through Front Porch Forum and would there be benefit in maybe trying to send survey cards like home in the kids Friday packets from the school, right, or enlisting other entities inside of um, inside of the town to try to do more outreach so that we get more opinion during the ranking part of of the survey. Um, and then the other thing that we we found is that, you know, if the select board could try to have more active communication rather than just adding it to the agenda, but actually trying to talk about how they're making decisions, that we thought that not only would this be helpful for spending COVID money, but it also would probably increase a lot of trust in, in the town government. Um, so we found we found that a lot of citizens were saying that they weren't, that, that they didn't necessarily think that the select board would make the best spending decisions. So there was there was very low trust that the select board would spend the money well. Um, most people thought that they just spend it on whatever their pet projects were. Um, and so again, that sort of active outreach, I think would be really important. Even if it doesn't necessarily change people's minds, I think it would increase trust a lot. And so again, you all are already on the side of the spectrum where you're doing most of these things, unlike the other towns that were part of this research. So this might not be as useful to you as, as say, some of the other select boards, because you're already doing a lot of this. I guess interpreting these results for the specific case of, of Bristol would be to, in this last stage of getting people to rank all of these suggestions, would be to try to do broader outreach more than just front porch forum to try to explain what is the process what is the goal and to try to collect information with the idea that this public outreach then would you know make people trust that they're part of the process and feel included more um before i stop sharing were there any slides that i should go back to that anyone wants to see in in more detail otherwise i can stop sharing <laughs> I think it's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, hopeful. Yeah, and so it was it was a pretty amazing process with the students. Again, you know, we had limited time. And so there are lots of things like if we could do a round two or three, I have lots of suggestions for them. Um, but they did a great job. And what was really fascinating for me was to see how much they learned. So they they really learned the personalities of these different towns. They also discovered um, some tensions between the idea of being a native Vermonter versus moving here. And they they were like, what is that? Is that a thing? <laughs> so they'd also oh, no. discovered. <laughs> 
they discovered a lot of interesting um, things. And then also the idea that there's a little bit of competition between towns. Like a lot of people were saying like, oh, well, what's Middlebury doing? What's Bristol doing? So they also learned, I think, a lot about Addison County, which is which is great. So I hope what they found was was helpful for you guys, even though you're sort of on the far extreme of, of that spectrum. I would think they also learned a lot about how town governments work, like the role of the select board, which they probably knew nothing about before they started this project. Yes, they knew nothing about that. And they they really enjoyed learning, although they were exposed to um, a lot of politics, like internal politics. I think they thought the select board was like a professional body, right? Where you could talk to one member and they represent everyone. And they had some interesting conversations like, you know, they they talked to, um, the, so in Virgins, they were talking to one group of city councilors, and then they talked to another group, and they thought that everyone was thinking like, oh, yeah, public participation would be great. And then they sort of got an earful about um, the citizen advisory board for the police department in Virgins, and that citizens, you know, don't really need to be sharing their opinions because they, they vote, and that's when they get to share their opinions. So, <laughs> It was, it was sort of interesting as they waded into all these local politics and they realized that there were these things like right beneath the surface that they had never noticed before. So before I ask my serious question, um, did they characterize the um, the vibe or you said, you said they got the identities of each of the towns, like what was Bristol's vibe? Like what did they, did they, did they put a adjective to us? They, well, they loved Bristol, um, but they also what they also found that was sort of funny is that um, so Darla and Ian were really happy to talk to them individually. And then everyone else in the select board said, you just have to talk to Ian. He's the chair of the select board and he'll represent, you know, our opinions. And so they were worried, you know, that they were getting two people's opinions instead of more select board members' opinions. So that was one concern they had. And they were like, why do only two of them want to talk to us? Um, but then they also um, they also loved Bristol because they said they felt like everybody on the committee was really trying, you know, in a lot of areas, they talked to people mm -hmm. and they didn't know what to do. They hadn't thought about it. They were just sort of waiting until the deadline to decide how to spend that money. And they felt that Bristol was being really thoughtful and trying to include Include lots of people. Um, plus, they loved Chris, so that was that was their favorite moment. <laughs> well, and everybody on this committee is kind. Mm -hmm. uh, great. So um, the question I have is, you know, I feel like the, um, you know, when I think of myself in those bar graphs, mm -hmm. um, for me, the public participation was the main thing all last summer and into the early fall. For the ranking, um, I don't feel like that's as important as a participation piece. It's more of a we're circling back and we're giving people a chance to weigh in and we want them to see where we're coming from and be ready to hear where we're going. Um, so I'm not inclined to um, you know to do a mailing or to stand at the dump and do all that again. Um, but um, I was thinking, and I, Ali actually said she wrote a note here on the paper, um, town meeting. So like, we're not planning to make our recommendations to the select board. Do we want to wait until town meeting and have town meeting be a place where we announce sort of our process and our progress and invite the rankings there? Or do we want to just go ahead and, and do it on front porch forum, get something maybe in by the way for the Addison Independent, um, put it back on our webpage um, and um, you know let people do what they're going to do from a tiny standpoint. I mean, I, I think it's up to you how how you want to move forward. Um, the what we seem to hear from a lot of people was that um, they felt that the select board already had ideas in mind and that um, that they either weren't sure that the select board would listen to their ideas. So what was the point of participating? Or it also seemed like um, 
people just weren't really sure what the idea should be. I think we saw that reflected in the survey, like people wrote topics, but they didn't necessarily write ideas. And so, you know, a lot of people, um, we, we had a couple of open comment questions in the survey. And a lot of people said, you know, I don't have an idea, like, I don't know what to tell. I don't, I know what the problem is, but I don't know how to tell them to fix it, right? Like, I don't have an idea. And so I think in some ways, the ranking might be easier for people who didn't share an idea because they didn't know one, or they just wrote housing on a postcard, you know, maybe seeing ideas and ranking them might also get them to participate in a different way. And I don't know if it would be a challenge. I mean, you know, maybe the town meeting would be great. But I know that, you know, through the school, they send out mailings about all kinds of different things that come home in those Friday folders, their community stuff, just all sorts of things. And so I didn't know if it would be possible to either, you know, stick a postcard in those folders or like um, Jenny at Bristol Elementary School, you know, she just sends it out over the, the email list, but it goes to all the parents. And so they might choose not to do it, but it might be good outreach saying, you know, we've heard a lot of your ideas and we've narrowed it down to this list. And, you know, we really want to know what matters to you, what you think the priorities are. A lot of the participation that we found wasn't so much people feeling like they wanted an active role. It was just the idea that they felt like somebody cared what the harm was and, you know, that we're trying to help them and that there was a process. And I think sometimes that you know, we're all really involved. And so we know what's going on. But for a lot of people, they just don't hear anything. And they just don't know. And so I, it's hard sometimes when you know, I talk to the select board, and they're saying we hold these meetings, they're on zoom, they're recorded, you know, there's lots of ways to find out this information. I think it's just hard sometimes for people to know where to go to look or, you know, feel that they can take time from their days, you know, there's just lots of barriers. And so if there's anything that we could do to lower those barriers a little bit, I think it might be worth it, not to make a whole bunch of work for us. But if there's like an easy way to do that, it might be good. I think that's great. And mm -hmm. we can certainly add this. So we can send it out from Porch Forum, the email at the school, mm -hmm. by the way, at the paper, and put a, a link on our website. Yeah. And they can also push that to whatever social media they're using. So, Who? well, uh, the town. I know Val's out, but okay. I think Ian has access to that now. Okay. And if there's a link too, like on our social media, like individually, right? We could have a link. We could. Well, so what, with, with, Bristol. Well, what the hope is, is that. Bristol would start that. It would okay. be it would be on on the Bristol Facebook page, okay. Okay. and then we we could, then we could share, share that out. Okay, got you. Okay, how I would okay. prefer to see that. Sure. Okay. And again, it's not a binding; it's just a ranking. Oh yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we may get it and go. Ooh, that's not even close to where we were headed. <laughs> but if that's we're true. if we're in the ballpark of one point one million, then yeah, I, I, the select board will do what they're going to do. Right. Um, do you have any other ideas for us or recommendations at this point, Jessica, based on our process or? I don't think she heard you. No, no, just I did, sorry. I just, I was looking at my notes and then clicking back over to unmute myself. Um, the, so I think, you know, just having the simple question about the, the forced ranking um, for your topics that you would come up with, I think that that's a great way to go. That keeps it really simple. Um, if you wanted to have one other item, you could ask about, you know, the ranking of harm from COVID. So if you think about presenting your list to the select board to not only say, you know, these are the things that the public supports in addition to what we support, um, but also if you could tie it to specific harm, right? Like, you know, 55% of the people who took the survey said that this was, you know, the biggest impact that they had from COVID. So that might be a way to encourage them to spend the money in those ways. Again, because that's what the fund is supposed to be for. It's COVID relief money. So Jessica, are you imagining that that question would the harm from COVID would be tied to each of the items on the thing or be an open-ended question about harm to COVID or a completely different question about harm from COVID? 
connection. Yeah. So I was thinking maybe that you would have the question one, which is, you know, please rank order these 20 or 15 or however many suggestions that you have. And, um, you know, we can have them sort of grab it and drag it and get their list in order. So that would be their prioritization. And then we can see, you know, how many percent pick X as their first choice or whatever. And then the second question could be, um, uh, you know, select all the the harms that you had from COVID. I wouldn't do an open question because somebody has to tabulate that. I would just like put in categories of harm maybe, and then let people pick the categories that apply. If you want to be fancier than that, you could also, once they pick those categories in the next question, you could say, you know, rank order them. Like what was the biggest harm to the smallest harm that, that you suffered? So I don't know how precise you want to be. I mean, I think just having them pick the categories of harm might be enough. So the categories could be taken from your bar chart of lost income, lost job, um, whatever. It could be, or they could be keywords from your 15 or 20 items, right? Transportation, childcare, housing, mental health, substance abuse. So you but could- I am a little worried that it, yeah. it, the major um, damage that COVID did was job loss and reduced income. We're not proposing anything that solves that as a problem. So I, I don't want to set up some sort of discord where they're saying, well, here's what happened to me, but mm -hmm. and you want to put a roof over the, uh, the skating rink and whatever. I right, exactly. And so that's why you might just want to use keywords from each one of the, the items. Um, the only reason that I think that a question like that might be useful, I don't think it would be useful for your purposes as the committee, but it might be good evidence to sort of put behind your suggestions to the select board. And if it's not, you don't use it, right? But if it helps your case, then you would have it to add in. If it doesn't help in any way and is just extra, you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, do Does the committee want me to work with Jessica to come up with that second set of questions or do we want to just keep it simple and just have people direct rank? I like the idea of having that like data to support. I do too. Uh, I, I mean, and Jessica's right. If, if they disagree completely, um, then we just don't use it. I mean, it's unfortunate that clearly we, we aimed wrong. We're not going to help the people who were most um, hurt by COVID, but let me see then if Jessica and I can put our heads together this week, maybe before classes start um, for you, Jessica, and um, we'll come up with a draft and I'll send it to the committee. And they can all play the game and we'll see how that pans out. And then we'll reset and send it out to the community next week. Sounds good. Okay. So is this tool computer based we're talking about? It is. So I, I have to say there's a lot of people who don't have computer access or don't want to or don't know how or whatever. So what are we going to do about that? Thank you for bringing up Betsy's point. Um, <laughs> I'm not planning to do anything about it, just to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I feel like this is more of a um, reaching back out and talking to people about what we've already done rather than the last, like last summer, I was like, we can't not do it several different ways because we have to try to get ideas from everybody. But now I don't know how to do that mm -hmm. in the winter. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's less important because I think that our recommendation to select board is going to be please fund all of these if you can. I don't know, I'm open to suggestions, but I'm feeling a little bit more on the expediency and efficiency side than on the engagement and outreach side at this point of the party. Well, what made me think about it was when Jessica said, or somebody, I think Jessica said, we're gonna send it home on in the Friday folder from school. Mm -hmm. And that made me think, okay, that's parents. What about elderly? What about, you know? Yeah. Who's gonna ask? Who's gonna say we want? What do you think? That's what we're asking them. What do you think? And this is what we did. Well, my thinking about town meeting was simply like, here's yeah, the document is... with the information for you to get onto your phone or to get onto your computer. So it wasn't like I was thinking that we would have like a presentation, like a person to person. I don't know. I don't know. I, it's a I really would great like question. to have a town meeting a um a display or a poster that says like 
here's what we did, here's where we are, here's uh -huh. what we recommend. Yep, that would be a good thing. But it wouldn't, I'm not imagining that town meeting piece being asking for more information. Okay. That's more saying, here's what we've done. Okay. This report will be made to the select board mm -hmm. um, this month. Mm -hmm. And then people it could can, be a simple statement at the, at the bottom that says, if you have comments, call one of these people. Or at this point, I, mean, I don't want, I mean, and the other thing too is, I mean, we're looking at sort of a ranking of what, or sort of a prioritization from the public. The back to the town meeting, poster board concept. I, I don't need all 20. Mm -hmm. What is the number one thing that, the quick down and dirty way to get it is, what's the, what's your number one concern? Go put a check mark. The, 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 the queue will oh, like everything. Like an interactive game. Oh, almost. Yeah, nice. so it, it's a poster board. And there's a pile of stickers. You've seen the little dots. Yes. Yeah, done. And then we've done that. Oh. That's a good idea. And, and that way we can sort of kind of get some tech out of it all, all together. So we'd have the items. We'd have a whole list. Have the whole list, and they can put a check mark next or, to or or just whatever. Stickers. Yeah. 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 They can take a dot and stick it up. What's yeah. your, what is your, what's your, your number, what's your what's your number one? one? That's a nice one. I love that. Because then we are reaching out to more people and it feels like we're... Yeah, I like that idea. What I love about that, Chris, is that it's doing exactly what I want to do, which is we're giving people a reason to take a minute and look mm -hmm. at it, mm -hmm. right? So we're not, we don't need to ask them for new ideas um, and we don't need to promise them that we're going to do whatever they right. say. Right. What we're doing is giving them a way to play with it. So it's about engagement. So we're giving them an opportunity to sit and look at it and think about it and maybe talk to their neighbor where they put the dot, whether they put the dot, right. if they cheat and put three is not a point. And, and at the bottom, it's about engagement. Yeah, yeah. And at the bottom, it's like if you'd like to for to get more into more detail, here's a link to the, the report. Yeah, yeah, they're so, put the report. And we, we can have the report on our website by then. And maybe, in, maybe even in a mailer that Jenny would send out that I, that I want to send out. And even front porch forum that we would let people know that this is going to be an opportunity for them so that they look for it there. Maybe we can drive people to town meeting. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I, I would be more you inclined know, to sort of do that as a second when we get closer yeah. to town meeting. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, hey, be looking. That's looking a good point. For, yeah. Separate it because the ranking right. is uh, a different right. tool. We're going to yeah. do the ranking actually next in two weeks. Right. So that's going to happen. Yeah. Before February. Right. And what will be and interesting this is, will happen in March. what it will also give us is two comparisons. So yeah, the, the, the town meeting project said everyone wants us to focus on these three things. Online, it was these three. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Okay. And our housing and yeah. child care are these three. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the select board can take that and scratch their heads. Exactly. <laughs> Great. Look at us. That's fun. What a committee. Perfect. Great. All right. Uh, Ooh, motion to adjourn. Motion. Are we going to Motion to thank Jessica for all her work and all of her students' work to, to gather this information. That was great. great. That yeah. was really a great I report. feel super lucky that we have you in our town. Mm -hmm. um, yes, our next meeting, Chris, will be the first Tuesday of February, which is the Monday. Monday, thank you. <laughs> first Monday of February, which is the 6th, 7 o'clock here, unless the select board does something weird, but that's our plan. <laughs> Um, seven. Thank you. Seven. Seven. Seven on the sixth. Okay.